uh, to take off the hand wheel, there's a little screw here that um, is your stop for when you for when you loosen for bobbin winding, when you loosen the uh, clutch knob, you can hear it stop. It won't unscrew all the way. That's because this screw is hitting up against the little nub on the back of the uh, washer inside there. So we're going to back this screw out just enough so it clears that little nub. Don't have to take it all the way out. It's too easy to lose it. And then this little washer has three points on it. One, two, three. And those are the nubs that the uh, uh, stop uh, screw is coming up against. And I, I kind of look at this like a little teddy bear head. It's got a nose and two ears. And when you put this on, uh, when you're putting it back together, if your stop screw is uh, landing on one of these nubs when you're clutch knob is tightened down all the way, then you have to turn it over. Right now the nose is pointing up. I'm going to turn it over so that the nose points down and the two ears point up. So once the clutch knob and washer are off, uh, your uh, hand wheel will just screw off. and. Um, if you hold the belt to one side as you turn this, it'll just roll right off. This one's got a, uh, a universal uh, rubber belt on it. It's a stretch belt. And I really like these. They don't last as long as the uh, fiber belts, but uh, they have a lot better traction and um, and they uh, don't seem to put as much uh, as much tension on the uh, on the motor and the shaft as the uh, um, composition ones do when they're tightened down. That's off. We're going to clean this shaft, and we're going to clean inside of the hole uh, that rides on the shaft. And for that, we're going to want to use a little bit of alcohol and. Uh, Alcohol dries my skin out. And over time, it'll make my fingers crack and bleed and hurt my keck. So I wear nitrile gloves when I'm using alcohol. So let me put a little alcohol on the paper towel. These are uh, paper shop rags. Uh, I like old t-shirts that you can buy from the thrift store for uh, you can buy them in bulk usually uh, ruined t-shirts just to use as cleaning rags uh, and then uh, let me use that alcohol moistened towel to clean the inside of the uh, hole that rides on the shaft uh, get that old sticky oil off. Then I like to put a couple of drops on the shaft. Before I put the hand wheel back on and give it a spin. Make sure it's, yeah, it's spinning real nice. Then that teddy bear washer goes back on. I'm going to put it ears up and screw this clutch knob on. And you just tighten it down all the way. Oh, I'm hitting one of those nubs. So I'm going to take that off. And um, Turn the hand wheel a little bit so it's pointing nose up. I'm going to take it off and turn it over so it's pointing ears up. There we go. So 
and screw that little screw all the way in. Then when you loosen your clutch knob, you feel it hit up against that stop. And when you tighten it down, it should tighten down all the way without hitting the stop in the other direction. So yeah, that feels good. I think we already oiled the bobbin winder. So what's left is the motor. I'm going to take the motor apart and clean the commutator and polish it a little bit if it's rough. Um, the screw that holds the motor on is right here. And this is an adjustment screw that uh, helps you tighten your, uh, uh, your motor belt. Um, if you loosen this screw, you can move your motor up or down a little bit. And that allows you to uh, adjust the tension on that belt. And if you're using a composition belt, uh, you don't want it really tight. If you run, if you tighten your belt down, your machine's barely going to move. Um, uh, so you want to, when the belt is adjusted correctly, you should be able to pinch just about an inch of play on it. Um, if you're machine is bogging down loosen it up a little bit if your machine is uh, uh, if your belt is just spinning on there without turning the hand wheel or turning the machine then you want to move your motor down to uh, tighten that belt a little bit so to take it off we're just going to take this screw out and of course the motor is attached to the inside by wires. There we go. There's that motor screw and the little washer that goes with it. And um The uh, motor attaches to the back of the uh, receptacle here that you plug your cord into. There's one screw here that holds that receptacle on. Take that screw out. It's a lot like a motor screw, except a little bit, uh, a little bit thinner. Um, and then there's a uh, there's a screw here that holds the um, the cord. Just loosen it up and turn that, or you can take it out. I'm going to just take it out. And this is the little hole down that that holds the cord in place. The cord here, lift out of there, and oops, I can pull your socket out a little bit further. And then pay attention to um, this. Uh, your motor wires go from the motor into this little tube and on in through into the interior of the machine. And this little um, this little tube here has the motor wires coming out of it. Pay attention to which two of the three. Um, nuts on the back those two wires go to. It looks like they go to number two and number three. So we're going to take off nut number two. And take off that motor wire. 
that's the only wire under number two. Put that back on a little ways and take off number three. And under number three, there are two wires. So put that other wire back on, leaving motor wire free. Might be a good idea to write down somewhere that the motor wires go to number two and number three. But now the wires should be able to pull out of here. Disconnected. You have to work you have to work that tube around a little bit to get it to go out of course you have to work it around to get it back in but there we go there it is that's your motor and its wires these other two wires that uh, go onto the uh, receptacle block here are the motors are the uh, wires that go to the uh, light and to the switch one of the wires comes from the light and goes to the switch and another wire comes out of the switch and goes to this block and the other wire just goes straight to the block from the light These are your um, motor brush hold downs. And be careful when you uh, screw these in and out. They're just made out of Bakelite, and uh, if you reef on them really hard, they'll crack. So be firm but gentle. And they're spring loaded, so don't let them fly off. Don't let your spring fly out. Your spring comes out with the carbon motor brush on it. Same on the one on the opposing side. Make sure it doesn't spring out. Take out your spring and your carbon motor brush. Then when you take this apart, these don't get jammed in and get messed up. motor screws are recessed on this particular one on the black ones they're usually sitting right on the surface here the wrong screw and the one on the other side You want to take off your uh, the uh, pulley for the motor uh, belt, uh, and that's held on by a little set screw right here. Sometimes you have to take these all the way out. Sometimes they're just a set screw. Sometimes they go all the way into or through the uh, motor shaft. And of course, if they go through the motor shaft, you have to take them out. Be 
get the uh, pulley off. You know what, I think it's going to help the light if I close that. Okay. Yeah, that's a, a long set screw. It went into the motor shaft. There'll be a threaded hole inside the in the shaft. And then that just slides right off. You can see that threaded hole that the uh, screw goes into. With that off, with those two screws out, we should be able to pull the uh, end off of this. Kind of twist it gently and work it loose. And be careful, there are going to be some little washers on the ends of the shaft, on both ends, little fiber washers. You don't want to lose those. And you don't want to pull your wires too hard when they come out of here because you don't want them to come loose from their connections inside. And you can see the fiber washers here. I'm going to take these off just so they don't drop out while we're handling it. Set them aside. There's a big washer here that usually comes off. This one feels pretty well attached. I think I'll just leave that in place. And again, there's very little wear on this thing, and so there's virtually no scoring on the uh, commutator. Uh, okay, we should be able to pull the other end off as well <clears throat> and pull the uh, shaft out. And you can see that the uh, winding came with it. The, uh, the winding has two wires that come off this side that attach to the, uh, uh, the place that the brush slides in. And that's where the motor brush makes contact with the uh, commutator. Uh, the electricity passes through the wire into the motor brush and from the motor brush into the uh, commutator and then that those spring loaded brushes just right against this as it spins that's how the electricity gets to the moving parts on the other side uh, the winding two wires come off and they come out and attach to the uh, uh, the receptacle block now if you move everything out of the way you can pull the uh, armature out Again, there's a fiber washer here that you don't want to lose. Looks like there's just one on either end. There's usually a few, two or three. Okay, that's your armature. And uh, I'm going to put this in the drill and spin it and use some super, super fine sandpaper on it to uh, smooth it out. Just chuck it right into your drill, tighten it, and then uh, you want five or six hundred grit sandpaper. So we have this 400, here's some 600, that would be great. So I'm going to tear off a little piece of this. I'm going to tear off a little piece of this 600 grit sandpaper uh, in a long strip. Crease it really good. You can tear it evenly. Oh, two sheets. Fold it both ways to uh, crease it. I'm going to 
fold this in half lengthwise. Make a very narrow band of fine, fine sandpaper. I'm going to wrap it around there and hold it loosely. You don't want to hold it too tight or it's going to spin out of your fingers. Um, and then we can drill in forward. If this were badly scored, uh, I would use a, uh, a little heavier grit sandpaper first, maybe some five or even some of that four. Hmm. And then use this afterwards to polish it up. But use the heavier to uh, to smooth it and then this to polish it at the end. Oh, that looks good. So I felt the rough end and I don't think it's a broken wire, but Take a look anyway. Oh, it's just a piece of string tied there. To hold the winding in place. Okay, put your washers back on. And uh, this is a motor that doesn't get oil. It gets grease rather than oil. And um, it's hard not to get too much uh, grease on it from your fingers, too much carbon and dirt. Um, that's one of the grease holes there. Oh, and there's the other grease hole here. So, uh, there's a little bit of dirt there on that one. Let's take that dirt off so it doesn't get pushed in. And I'll put the grease in. And you can use Singer motor lubricant or the old Singer manuals tell you that you can also use Vaseline. Okay, now um, I'm going to put the winding back in place. It uh, has a little lip that sets into the end of the housing. And then this band I'll put on. And um, the uh, if you remember, the uh, we took the uh, brushes out of this end, so this end is the end that the commutator will go in. Uh, so I'm going to take the uh, windings out to get that in there. Careful, you don't lose your little washers. back together here. Again, the, uh, again, that little lip will fit into the recess that's made for it on the other end of the motor housing. And you'll see that the motors come off this side. You want to make sure that you put uh, this back on with the uh, hole for the wires facing out in that direction. Slip the end of the uh, armature in here into the shaft in here and press the two pieces back together and as you work it on uh, it will work under the edge of the uh, 
winding. It's closed up tight. You can put your screws back in. When you put your brushes back on, you'll notice that the end of your brush is shaped at the curve of the armature. Make sure that that curve uh, goes in the same arc as the armature. You don't want it 90 degrees to it. You want the armature to ride in that uh, curved shape. You probably do it anyway. Push it in, put your cap screw back on there. You tighten it down, but gently. Again, remember these are made out of Bakelite and they will break. I know from experience. Okay, line up that curve with the curve of the armature. Commutator, put it in there, cap on. The, uh, the hole in the uh, <coughs> side of the, um, this is the uh, motor pulley, by the way, for the belt. Make sure that that hole in the motor pulley lines up with the hole on the shaft. And then put your set screw back in. So the motor is cleaned and polished and we're going to put a little lubricant in it. You know what, this doesn't have a motor lubricant tip. I guess I'm going to have to force the uh, grease in there the old-fashioned way. Make sure that this is clean of grit and dirt. Of course, we don't want to push any in there. one you can just force it up against it and push the grease in. Doesn't take too much. Don't put a little grease on your finger and force it into that hole. Then the heat of the motor 
will draw that grease in. I have a uh, set of test wires here that I made by simply putting an alligator clip on either wire, uh, a cord with a plug on it. Uh, attach your wires with the alligator clips. Make sure that the alligator clips do not touch each other. And then you can just plug it into the wall outlet and Away it goes. You run it for a minute or so to let it um, settle in. You can hear that it's winding up, picking up speed as it takes in the uh, grease and the parts settle themselves and the The uh, carbon brushes uh, adjust themselves to the uh, commutator. And it doesn't really matter since this is an AC motor, which wire you connect uh, to which clip. On a DC, it would make a difference. Okay, and the, the, uh, the wire protector tube goes back in through the hole there side of the motor well, first. It's a good time to clean out the uh, motor receptacle here behind it. And the motor is going to sit th this way with the uh, uh, yeah. The motor is going to sit this way with the motor pulley on this end, and uh, you can see the uh, the slide where it moves up and down in the adjuster, and the motor wires go. In this hole here, through there to the uh, inside of the body.
And before we uh, connect those, I'm going to put the uh, motor screw loosely back in so the motor's not flopping around and getting, getting all chipped up. So, there we go. We're not going to adjust it now, that's just to hold it in place. The motor wires, you remember, went on screws two and three. three and put the wire from the switch back on number three as well. So number uh, the wires that go to one and three are essentially the uh, the two wires that come from the, uh, the sewing light up here. Uh, however one of them one of the wires makes a detour and connects to either side of the switch before it goes to this block. So you can cut the power on that wire by uh, flipping the switch. And the other wire goes on pole two. Cap screw goes on. Make sure they're snug so they're not going to rattle off. <coughs> Don't over tighten them, but get them snug. And then that fit back in. A single screw goes in to hold it in place. And then this wire hold down. The wire hold down, which actually had absolutely nothing to do with what we just did, goes back on right here because that turns out that that is actually holding down the uh, sewing light wire. So I, I really didn't have to uh, take that off. That keeps the uh, sewing wires out of the gears of the machine, which they run fairly close to. And you can see there's a little wire protector here that fits under that recess. Keep what goes on over it. goes in the hole of the keeper. Here's the, mo the sewing light motor. Here's the uh, little protector sleeve. This is the keeper. And of course, this is the screw and holds it all together there. <clears throat> and again, that's just to keep this wire, this wire from getting up against the gear and getting ground through to the copper and keeping some of these to an early grave. Cover. See, we've already cleaned and oiled inside here, so we can put this cover back on. cover has a felt washer and a thumb screw. That's the big thumb screw. It's pretty hard to mistake.
There's a notice on the bottom that says important disconnect supply cord before removing this cover for servicing. Okay, we did. Uh, that big finger nut has a slot in it, which is convenient. You can use a screwdriver. Oh, and look at this convenient thing I shouldn't mention. If you uh, just want to check your motor brushes, um, you can take the motor brush cap off the top here while it's in place and take the screw and the carbon motor brush out. And on the bottom, it's got a hole here that you can get a screwdriver through and reach the cap on the bottom. So that's cool. Uh, the stretchy belt is going to go back onto the uh, pulley of the motor. And then up over the wheel and into the groove on the hand wheel. And the motor turns, turns the machine. Let's see, is that it? I think that uh, I still need to adjust the motor. And since it's a, 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 a universal tension band, I'm going to set it up at its loosest setting because this rubber has so much friction, it doesn't take a lot of tension to turn this little machine. Then no, no, what, you plug it in? Wow, why not? Let's see. I think I forgot. Is that speedy? screw part of this assembly is this from a different machine I don't believe there's anywhere else for a thumb screw to go oh I know this was holding on this attachment this is just a guide a fabric guide and this uh, this featherweight has a numbered uh, throat plate, which is really cool. Um, it helps you, uh, has a nice neat hem, and you put this little guide on there, and you can just adjust it to wherever you, how wide you want your hem to be. You tighten it down, and then just run your fabric along there. You'll have a nice neat even seam. We're gonna leave that off for now. We'll include it with the machine, but no reason for it to be on there. Okay. Power. This is that switch that turns your light on and off. As I said, the uh, one of the two wires from the lamp uh, passes through this switch and uh, so when you lift the switch it just disconnects the power between the two ends of that cord. Hmm, no light. Ah, let's put a light bulb in. And let's not put just any light bulb in, let's put an LED light bulb in. Let's see if this will fit. LED light bulbs use way less electricity and uh, produce less heat, which is wasted energy. And if you're uh, living the RV life and running on solar and you want to keep your power usage down as much as possible, this will save you a few watts. I have incandescent bulbs if this one doesn't fit. Some of these bulbs have a little lip on the 
metal cap end that may or may not fit inside that housing. Let's see. This is just a push in and twist bayonet bulb. Oh boy, look at that. Okay, we have light. Isn't that cool? All right. Uh, you don't want your feed dog grinding against the bottom of the presser foot, so we're going to raise the presser foot while we do this and make sure that the needle is correctly positioned in the hole and that the presser foot is turned correctly so that the needle goes between the two toes of the presser foot without hitting anything. And off we go. It's going to take a little while for the oil to work itself in. This is a full rotary hook machine, so you don't lose any power with the oscillating hook. I'm going to add a little more oil. That's adjusted up as far as it will go. Slightly longer belt would be better, I think, but we'll start to make some tension on there. Foot control. Let's move you back out of the way, sweetie. Make sure that you're unplugged from the wall because this is 110 volt power and it will damage you. These four screws on the bottom hold these rubber feet on and they also hold this bottom plate on. There's not really much to do inside, but they sometimes collect dust. I don't think I've mentioned, but here in the mini shop, uh, out here in the Sonoran Desert, uh, we don't have any shore power to plug into, so all of our, our power comes from the sun. We have 275 watt solar panels. Uh, once you get those four screws out, you just press down on this uh, button and it'll push the bottom out. And the four Rubber feet will fall off. And the button will fall out. Yeah, it's pretty clean in here.
Yeah, no dust collected in there whatsoever. Okay, your button has to go back in and uh, the slot goes towards the middle of the uh, of the uh, foot control. So we'll slide that down in there and this little lever here rides in it and when you press the button down it pushes this down which pulls this out which uh, it's a carbon rheostat that increases and decreases the power uh, hence the speed the four rubber feet um, have little holders built onto them so they just slip on there and stay in place while you reattach it um, there's a cord hole down here it's going to go in this slot and hold the cord in place keep you from yanking the cord out accidentally and gently work it down if you're if anything feels out of place don't force it uh, lift it off and check make sure that everything's as it should be it's not hard to break things if you force them so only force things if you absolutely have to, if all else fails. Well, I sure do like my magnetic tool hangers. Sure makes putting tools away a whole lot easier than putting them in drawers or putting them in the correct slots. Okay, that's it. That's your uh, Singer Featherweight Restoration. It's been a pleasure. So, uh, good luck with your featherweight, and uh, you can do it. Thanks for watching.